This is my favorite part. I love this part. It, it's like when you're, I don't have parties now because I have a child, but do you remember being little and like your parents maybe having a party and we'd sit at the window and then watch the headlights come up and then we would be at attention because it was our job to take the coat until there was a coat related tragedy that I'll tell you about off camera, Courtney, and then we couldn't take coats anymore. That's a very um, picturesque memory of childhood. I, I think ours were more like waiting on the stairs. We had no epic drive with headlights. And, mm. and it was like for my mom for Halloween, the night of Halloween, like my brother and myself, our job was to put glow sticks in all the monsters' eyes, but we had to wait until it was the right level of darkness. And then it would like turn off all the lights in the house. And then there'd be a lot of shushing of my father and making him turning off the television. He was like not a participant in Halloween. He's just a bystander. So that's really charming. That's pretty funny. Oh, but I, I like the sentiment, the internal like anxiety, yeah. excitement of childhood and your parents throwing a party. I totally that resonates. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, welcome. This is just one o'clock, just 101. So we'll wait a few minutes as people are um, <clears throat> As, as a special bonus for the early birds, we should make sure that everyone has their materials, acrylic ink and paper. Yeah, and a nib pen. And a nib pen. Um, oh my God, Kate, I'm calling you out. I cannot believe you're here. I haven't seen you in forever. And I've noticed your epic background, I, which is in a tiny thumbnail, but it looks cool. And like, like you're in a fun little cathedral back there. So good to see you. I just happened to see it like five people in the top of my screen here. I know there are a lot more of you. So welcome to anyone else I might have missed, but Kate just happened to be at the top of my screen and I haven't seen her in so long. So good to see you. I see you a lot, but you don't see me. <laughs> yeah, so I had to do this with you because I love Halloween too. Oh my God. Yeah. Show of hands. Yeah. Who loves Halloween? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think Phil's on here too. Oh my God, you guys are gonna make me cry already. <laughs> I was gonna say, Courtney, when was your last live? But it was like last month. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago, yeah. But I miss my people. Um, Halloween is my favorite time to show up and do stuff. So this is a fun one. Oh my God, someone has a little mask as their profile picture, Kim. Is that your costume? I love it. It's like a mask and a black hat, but it almost looks like just drawn on. I can't tell. We'll give people just two more minutes to trickle in and then we'll start in a more official way. <laughs> this is a really exciting one because I, will you first, see, I, it's really hard to not get started. <laughs> I know, I know. But I feel like you first yeah. showed this to me a while ago. Yes. When you like casually had out a nib pen and acrylic ink as one does when one is Courtney Cerruti. And I was like, what? what we, we can do this? It's really fun. This technique is super fun. You guys may have already seen it on day 18 of the daily practice, but um, it's going to be really fun to do together in this little hangout session. Um, Julie says, I miss Courtney and Faith co-classes. Sneak peek. This is the value of coming to these Zoom lives. We are actually planning another one coming up soon. So, Julie, stay tuned. Oh, I don't even know if she was referring to daily practices, which we could talk about at the very end. <laughs> and I actually, Courtney, I'm going to use a, a something this for, um, I'm using this today, but it's going to feature heavily in the daily practice. Oh, I love it. I'm excited. <sighs> Welcome, everyone. We'll wait one more minute and then um, we'll start. Um, Courtney, I'm often talking at the beginnings of the lives. I do solo about um, elevator music. And I don't know if my parents are actively punking me or if it's totally coincidental that in this house somewhere, I'm at my parents' house, there's like soft jazz playing. <laughs> um, I have to say soft jazz has been my jam recently. Joe, my partner commented on it. He was just like, oh, you've got some like nice cool vibes happening when you cook. I was like, yeah, I need some, 
need some like calming music with no words while I'm cooking and my toddler's racing around. Mm -hmm. How does, how does she feel about smooth jazz? She's really funny. She won't notice it for like an hour and then we'll be eating dinner and it'll still be softly playing. And she goes, where's that trumpet coming from? <laughs> like she's, literally that's what she said. She's brilliant. My <laughs> problem with the, with the jazz station on the radio is if it switches to acid jazz and I'm not ready for it, I'm like, I can't chop potatoes and listen to acid jazz simultaneously. You will lose a finger. Absolutely. Okay, everyone, welcome. I think we're just a little bit after one, so we'll start just so you don't have to hear me and Faith chit chatter too much, although that will happen regardless. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us live on this um, cool Zoom hangout. I always enjoy these. Faith is um, usually the regular around here, so I'm happy to have her um, joining me today. If you guys have been following along with the daily practice for October, it is a spooky mono prints. Um, can I just see like a raise of hands? Like how many people have been doing that along with me? A few, <laughs> some. Um, this is one of my most favorite techniques to share. I probably say that about every class when I start it, but I really do love this technique. It's something I come back to again and again. We're not gonna be doing the tracing and monoprint technique in this live together today. Instead, we're gonna be doing ghost signatures, which is like a variation, um, just using the same material. So nib pen, and ink. You don't have to have necessarily waterproof ink like we've been doing for the rest of this month. I use FNW normally. You can use almost any ink because the ghost signature you most likely won't be watercoloring on top of um, like we did with the illustrations to add a painted layer. So waterproof ink is not as essential, but nib pen is essential. Um, welcome everyone. And just feel free to use the chat because I will just keep talking and I want to make sure I answer your questions. Um, and then Faith is going to also do this along with me. And hopefully you guys have your supplies if you want to do this as well. It's, um, hi Taya, thanks for doing the monoprint class. Um, it's something that's fun to do solo to learn the technique, but really fun to do with friends, like in a dinner party situation in a hangout session as the beginning of like a craft night, um, just because you get this unique print that is yours if you're using your signature. And so it's sort of like this thing that you feel, you feel ownership to, but is also very abstract. And there's no reason really you should feel ownership to necessarily. It's also changed by your handwriting or whoever's handwriting, the amount of pressure that you use on your nib pan. So there's a lot of um, variation that can happen as well. So to do our little technique, you're gonna need a nib pen of some kind. Uh, this part is called the straight holder and my nib, this one I happen to be using is like just some vintage style one. It's, I'm not even sure what it is because it's so covered in ink, but I like it because it holds a lot of ink because um, it's a bigger nib. I normally use something like a Nico G, which is a stainless steel nib. Um, let's see. Well, look at this. I can bring this closer to my, <laughs> my camera. So stainless steel Nico jib, that's what um, Nico G nib, which is normally what I use for this. And then I also like to use just like found weird vintage ones. Um, I have like a whole little drawer of these fun found vintage nibs. So just like anything, experiment, experiment with what you have. And then paper, I just brought a variety of paper. So I've got tracing paper. I've got the Strathmore drawing paper, which we've used for the daily practice all month. I've got UPO, uh, which is not really paper. It's like a thin plastic or I'm not actually sure of the material, but it's not paper. It is not absorbent. It's much more like a plastic. Um, and I've got some copy paper and hot pink. So we've got a few different things. And, um, oh, before I start, Phil's saying he loves the book. I'll just show you a quick example of what this looks, looks like before we start in case you didn't get a chance to see day 18 of the daily practice. Wait, do you have any questions? I'm just like going for it. Oh, I'm making notes. Don't you worry. I'll say <laughs> like a small talk portion. <laughs> um, so this is a book that actually my friend, Mary Frank, who used to be a customer at our shop and also um, a workshop when I taught a lot of per workshops in person, I would see her there. Um, she was like, I just saw this book and I have to show you this technique. And she came to the store and like, we did it for an hour, basically when there was no one in the store and it was super fun. This is a Victorian sort of parlor game style book. Um, I can't remember what year this was published. It probably will tell me in here. It's called Ghosts of My Friends. Hmm, does it have a publication date in here? 
maybe it's in the back. Um, it's either early 1900s or late 1800s. It's a pretty old book. The paper is very brittle. And the idea is, um, you know, you'd have your friends come over <laughs> as you do, <laughs> and you would fold each of these little entry pages in half. So there'd be a line. You'd sign your name on the line using a nib pen, which was again, the common pen. This is not a ballpoint pen, right? Or a fountain pen. It's like a dip nib pen that holds a lot of ink. And then you'd crease back on the line you've already folded and you would get this sort of mirror um, image of the signature that creates this like really cool calligraphic ghost. So here's Albert Reed from 1909. And I showed some of these in the class. Um, and this book is so old that like the fold and the ink combination and the acid from the paper is actually causing the pages to crack on those folds. Um, and some are much more lacy and spidery and others are much more heavy. I love this one. Um, this is Henrietta, what a great name. I have to say I have a lot of like name regrets with my child sometimes. I'm like, oh, Henrietta, that would have been a good one. <laughs> Here's another one. This is Gladys. Less name regret there. So it is a little treasure. I love this book so much. Um, it actually lives in this tiny <laughs> bag that has ghosts on it that my mom gave me because it fits so perfectly. And then it's easy to, for me to recognize on my bookshelf. Ghosts of my friends. Okay, so we're gonna do this together. You're gonna take whatever paper that you have and you're just gonna fold it in half. And I like to fold it so that I have a long fold. You know, you'd say like hot dog. And then you're gonna open it back and use that fold as your line for writing on. And, um, sort of writing right on the line. I like it so that I'm writing with the line going down the center in the sense that I'm going above and below the line when I go to write my name. And if you don't want to do your name, another thing you can do, like I said in the class as well, is um, do a sentiment or a phrase. You can play with different things to see how they look. Um, I'm going to just write the word happy Halloween, or the words happy Halloween. And I'm using my F&W ink just because that's what I love in indigo in this little dinky dip. I just ordered these. They have like a little suction cup. I've never tried these, so they're pretty fun. Okay, here we go. I'm applying pressure. You can hear the scratchiness of my nib. I'm trying to press down a little so that I get more ink. And then pretty immediately, I'm going to fold back on the crease and rub with my finger and then open up to reveal my ghost signature. So I think Halloween was pretty successful because it's nice and blobby. Um, the word happy, I feel I don't love that because um, I can still see the word happy and the mirror impression is not as rich as I'd like. So I could go over that again. Um, so Mel says, can we see your hands in the paper camera is set on your face? Everything should be spotlighted or pinned to the top. Okay, let's see. I'm only one who can see face camera on the web version of Zoom. Ivy, I don't know if you have any. Instead of spin, pinning, should we be spotlighting? I Yes, I think you're correct there. Ivy, are you able to spotlight um, my hands at least? Um, let me try pinning because I do have all of all four of those cameras spotlighted. Oh, I see. You're right. You do. Even though it shows the pin icon. Come on, Zoom, get your better icons. Okay. Some people say they're seeing both of my cameras. Okay. Hopefully folks can see it. So um, if anyone is not seeing both Courtney's face and my face and Courtney's hands and my hands, check what your pins are. So in the upper right-hand corner, you'll want to click on view. And um, Remove all spotlights might help you out or speaker might help you out. Galleries is probably not what you're looking for. Jay says, yes, choose speaker view. Okay, thank you for the technical help, guys. Um, I'm just going back over the word habit to get more blobs. By the yes, way, this is my name and I think Ooh. it's perfect. 
I love it. I love that little interesting like cross arms. It also looks like you're wearing a crown. With the little, the little dot from the eye. Yeah. Um, Good job. My parents naming me this. I know. I'm going to do another, actually let's do not hot pink because I think it's a little bright on the camera. Let's go to the tracing paper. Also like onion skin paper. I mean, honestly, you should experiment on anything. Um, vintage paper works well. You need to be careful with things that are really fibrous because you can catch them in the, the tip of your nib and then you're going to get like smears and blobs, which might be frustrating, but also might add more of a distressed spooky look. Happy Halloween again. Ooh, the tracing paper, the ink is coming through. It's my finger. That's pretty fun. It's very like light. Um, this ink will be more moist and wet and take longer to dry on something that's like a less porous surface. Tracing paper and the UPO are gonna have that coated surface. And so it takes longer for things to dry. Um, Okay, some folks said I switched to the app on my computer instead of web version working great. Okay, great. Um, do you guys wanna share if you're following along um, briefly? I'd love to see what people are doing before I try something else or show you something else. Oh yeah, I can see Kate's. Let's see, I'm gonna scroll through here. Hold them up to the camera if you can. I still see people working away. Oh yeah, Kobe, I love that. <gasps> That looks amazing. Oh, um, what'd you write? I, I wrote Kobe Hartwell, which is my partner. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. You have to tuck I, it somewhere. I will, I'm gonna go put it somewhere secret for him to find. So love it. I love that you can know the messaging, but it's not like obvious in the visual at the end. I feel like it's great for sort of like intentions and secret wishes and um, a good starter too. If you're doing like a journal, a sketchbook, um, a mixed media journal, an art journal, you can just use a page in your journal and fold it in half or even use opposing pages and do the print that way. Um, if you look at the background here, these pieces of paper are three feet by four feet. Kobe and I made these yesterday as a little backdrop for this live. And it's essentially the exact same technique, but we just used acrylic ink on paper and did these calligraphic marks and smushed them. And you can see that we're working with like four different colors. You can add layers. Um, and so it's really fun because you get a very abstract final product, but you can have some intentionality in the way or the what you choose to write. These are looking really good, everyone. Oh, Heather, you have your hand raised. Did you have a question? Yeah, like it's not working for me. I mean, You're using I got a nib. I got a nib. I got um, this carbon ink. Yep. And it's like I fold it, and you can just you can still see my name really good. Like okay. It yeah. What I would up like you guys. What I would try is just doing a couple letters or just your first name printing opening again and then doing your last name because your ink might be drying it may just be a little less um, heavy in its line and you need a little bit more juicy ink I have tried this with other types of pens things like paint pens um, those like gold metallic sharpies not the the ones that you have to shake you know <laughs> I was wondering if it was the pocket. paper like maybe the paper's just absorbing it because I use like some thicker paper and like that really absorbed it fast like that yes that could be it too I was trying to use some mm -hmm. regular paper yeah the other thing with um using the thicker paper is that your fold is going to be much more evident so anything like cardstock the fold is going to be uh maybe it doesn't have to be distracting necessarily, but it could cause like a more definite crease and also can crack on the back. So I like it sort of a text weight or lighter paper for this, but you could okay. use cardstock for sure. If, if you like that and you're going for something specific. Faith, right. I would just like it to, yeah, I don't know. Mine just keeps showing up with my net. Like it doesn't look like you get, like you guys have the cool, like it looks like a what do you call those? Um, like a Rorschach? You know, cycle, yeah, Rorschach test. Like those, what yours kind of looks like, but I don't know if the paper's just absorbing it so fast. Like it's, 
yeah try I'm using like pepper. extra ink yes, and yes. just doing it and it just it must be the paper because it just I, so troubleshooting on the fly is truly my greatest love in life and i think that courtney's suggestion of just doing a few letters and loading on the ink is definitely going to help here i did happy halloween and I had a really similar result to you. You can still see that it says happy. Right. right. But then I made sure I did extra ink and I just did the word happy and it's so much better. Oh right? So okay. fewer letters, oh. load on the ink. Oh, Sumita has some fascinating results. I actually, I don't have ink and uh, the pen. I did this with watercolor. <laughs> Yeah, I did this watercolor experiment. Fabulous. Yeah. You can try using I, I did thing. this before the marker, but it's not working. But I did this with watercolor. It's not that. You can absolutely use other things and just know that the results will be slightly different, right? So you're gonna get um, more blooming, more big areas well, of color. Yeah. And less fine little detail. The nib pen gives you a little bit of a range for fine detail and for larger ones. So I think Faith is trying with a watercolor um, brush as well. The other thing that can work is using the dropper, the tip of the dropper in the ink itself. So, um, and you can just play with marks or words and see what you get there. So this is obviously much juicier and you can start to layer things. I will just add that printer paper did it. Yeah. Like <laughs> right off the, like copier paper, that works like a charm if that right. helps anybody. Yeah. yeah, here's some other little ones that are like more little shapes. I think they these always look like little bugs to me. I love them. Um. So, and something that I did not show in the class because this is newish, Faith and I, well, like most of your creative friends are constantly DMing you um, inspiration or weird things to look at. And Faith sent me this like esoteric rare book dealer who had this book called um, Klexographian. It's like a German um, book about these this mark making style. The book is wildly expensive, but... There is a PDF, free PDF version online and Ivy has the link she'll post in the chat. It's like a hundred pages, um, but I printed out some of them so you can see them because this, these are actually images as opposed to signatures, but they're created using the exact same method. So if you think about like um, creating paper chains, right? Where you have to kind of know the shape and half of the shape. And then when you cut it in its folds, you get like a little row of children holding hands or jack-o'-lanterns or um, angels or what have you. So similar concept for the way that you're thinking about it. And then you get these weird, somewhat figurative uh, results. Here's like this spooky wreath <laughs> kind of image. Um, also a lot of like moth shapes. I have no idea what these things say because they're in German. I mean, Memento Mori is not in German, but the rest of this type is in German. <laughs> like Gothic German typeface. Um, so these were like sort of skeletal and moths and things. But I like just the idea of using this technique to make like weird amorphous figures. These ones are pretty macabre, but I think you could also do it for things like butterflies or pumpkins. I love this one because he looks like a scarecrow. Um, if you guys can see these. Like a gnome, like an angry. Yeah. Um, sort of these, like this one reminds me of like a masked damsel. Again, moth style, little moth. Yeah, these are so interesting and strange. Here's like a little person they added hands and a face to after creating the little blob. Um, so I thought we could also try doing some shapes. You could start with something really simple, like a bug, like a butterfly or a moth and trying to see what you get. The other thing is if it's hard for your brain to think in like, what does just half of something look like? You can draw the whole thing, but know that when you print it, it's going to reproduce on either side. So it's still gonna change your image in some way. So um, 
if I were to do a full little bug here, if you can see. Because the left and the right side are not identical, when I press it over, I still get a really unique image. And you can also layer here. And if you are using watercolor or playing with a watercolor brush instead of a nib pen, this is another place where you can get some more interesting results. And this is essentially how the backdrop was made um, that Kobe and I did together. Tell me again what kind of markers you used or paintbrushes or? On the backdrop? Yeah. On the backdrop, we actually use Sennelier acrylic, which comes in a pouch, very similar to like a toddler pouch that you eat out, out of like a pouch with a little plastic um, nozzle, essentially. And so it allows you to sort of write with it, but you could do the same thing with just a tube of acrylic paint. I mean, I've done it that way as well. We just happen to have those colors. So here layering color um, and just trying these shapes. So you can think of these as like spooky bugs. At least all mine, I feel like look like bugs. So if you guys, um, I don't know, let's see, let's do like five to 10 minutes of playing with these shapes. And you, if you don't have the nib pen, try using whatever you do have on hand, try using the watercolor and the brush or the ink bottle if you want. And then we can maybe share some of our spooky bugs. When I first started practicing these, I would use a full sheet of paper, but I, I found that it would dry too fast. Yeah. And now I just have these little scraplets of paper because I feel like the results are so much more fun and tiny and ridiculous and weird. Yeah. Weird, precious. I mean, that's also more on the scale of an insect. And I just think they do look like an insect. I'm going to show you an example that's less insect-like toward the end. Um, here's the Yupo paper with just writing, but it's much blobbier. Um, and it's actually still drying, even though I did this like a half hour ago, because it's essentially plastic. Let's see. I have some examples too from, I think from the, these are all from the daily practice. So here's like a bit of um, tracing paper, three layers. This is acrylic ink. So again, very much like a butterfly. There's a black post-it note that's gold acrylic paint and hot pink acrylic paint. Um, there's more just like a little moth. We just, we just write any name? You can write any name, but you can also write words or phrases that are coming to mind. We've been doing more spooky ones like Happy Halloween, but you could do blessings, mm -hmm. you could do abundance, you could do pumpkin. Um, you could literally write anything. You could write I'm eating chips and just to see what kind of the way your hand writes, how many loops, like how lacy or how dense the image is. I really liked this one. Um, I can't even remember what I drew initially. I think I attempted sort of a moth shape. And these are good too to now go back with more layers if I wanna add more color. Here are ones um, that are just with the ink. So again, working in layers. You're so pretty that pink is vibrating on my screen. I know, I'm very partial to the neons. Um, I just love, I don't know, I find them so engaging and immediately satisfying, just like everything else. I talk about this in most of my classes. Things that keep me interested are things that have an unexpected quality, something that I could be very quote unquote proficient at and still have the same results even as a beginner. So there's not a lot of skill into putting some paint down on paper and smushing it. Um, it allows people of all abilities and ranges to get an interesting and sort of arresting image. And then every single one is different, which I also love. So this is totally something like I could do with my toddler but also um, I would do in my own practice as someone who considers themselves like a professional artist, right? So people of all age range and skill levels can participate in having fun making these. Um, one thing that has surprised me about this process is I always assume that like a, a nib and a nib holder would be an expensive item, like a fancy calligraphic tool. 
So if you don't have a nib and a nib pen, you'll be shocked to learn. It's like a very inexpensive piece of artistic equipment. And I would highly recommend getting one. How much is the nib? Like $3? Yeah, anywhere from $1.50 to $3. And then the straight holder is anywhere from $3 to $10, depending if it's plastic or wood. Speedball makes little kits you can get for around $12 that have multiple nibs and multiple holders. Um, most art supplies or craft stores will have at least that. And then you have to go to like a more fancy, refined sort of place to get the individual components. Um, but there are lots of places online like Jet Pens, which is uh, based in California in the Bay Area actually, but like ships globally. They have a lot of cool, it's a great site for pens in general, but they have a lot of cool um, combinations of straight holders and nibs. And also um, just if you look up calligraphy supply, anybody that sells calligraphy supply will have these these things and yeah, total it like under $10 to get the materials. <clears throat> and I actually, I don't draw a ton. I'm uh, much more like akin to like, I like to watercolor paint mostly just straight out without sketching. But when I do draw, it is almost exclusively with a nib pen. I really enjoy it for drawing. Um, I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Why? Why do I not like to draw? Why do you, why, if you are drawing, you are drawing with a nib pen? I think it works really well with watercolor. So I often will use them in together. I like the sort of hard edge or calligraphic line to add to my, my floral paintings, for example. I don't have any samples of that. Otherwise I'd show you, but um, I just love the sort of scratchiness. I like the resistance. I like that I can get a thick and thin line and it just, I find that there are very few other tools that give you a similar look. Mm -hmm. It is unique. Yeah. I don't know. I could also say that like that one, there's a scene in Sleepy Hollow with Johnny Depp where he's like writing with the nib pen. And I just was like immediately like, that's amazing. I love everything about that. I forget that the calligrapher's name in that. He's like a very famous calligrapher who used to basically do all the Martha Stewart calligraphy and. Um, he has like a funny, like Bert or something is his name. I'll have to Google it later. Sorry, I can't Google and also teach on his own at the same time. <laughs> um, I think a blue pumpkin nib would hold lots of ink. This is Aaron. I'm not sure what a pumpkin nib is, but I will check that in. Pumpkin, not pumpkin, but pumpkin. Um, Jessica is curious about Sumier India ink. Would they work well for this or the transparency prints or do you yes, sumi ink, um definitely can work well not all sumi inks are treated equally so if you are going to watercolor over it's not always permanent that's why i like the fnw because i know that it's permanent and then i can watercolor over it afterwards so that's why it's my go-to um but you could absolutely like honestly you can use this whatever you have on hand because we're not watercoloring over these necessarily does that say bats or cat's face? What does that say? I was just, it says bats. And oh, I was like, like oh, boo, failure. Right. It's <laughs> really like cute. Give it a little tail. Yeah, it's really cute. Um, um, and I'll actually, put a link in here for the quills.ca. That looks cool. A pu yeah, pumpkin nib. I've never heard of that. I want to try that. I, I do want more. Oh, yeah, look. Those look great. Those are using watercolor. Happy yeah, these are cool. Yeah, do you guys want to share um, kind of what you've been making? Ooh, hold them really close to the camera. So I just, I'm like leaning in like, like, oh, oh, I love these. Kate, I love that. Oh, who's next to you? Kobe, I love that. Okay, I got to scroll over so I can see everyone else's. Oh, Jay, amazing. Ooh. Oh, these are fabulous. These are so fun. These are incredible. Um, I just hope that you can, like in a few minutes, you can have an entire collection. Like I made um, a bunch of these on six by six paper, just in gold for a set. Was, it, was that for our altered books class, Faith? It might have been. Yeah, if you go to our altered books class, I think that was the set that we did. It was just a wall of these tiny prints all in gold. And they're just, it's just spectacular. I don't, I mean, I think anybody could make them and they would look spectacular. Just having um, 
one element just masked out in that way, I think is just like really impactful. Faith, I love your little critters. These are looking so great. I'm thrilled uh, beyond belief. Um, this would be a pretty cool like wedding project, how people will have like oh, yeah. a hair balloon made out of some prints. Like if everybody did a signature, I think that could look really dramatic and dreamy. Yeah, then you could frame it. I mean, like you don't have to know the literal, like you don't have to see the signatures for it to be powerful, right? Mm -hmm. And you can also just like make loops and swirls and play with shape and see, you know, what kind of images you get from that. Oh my gosh. It's just, I, I basically it. could do this all afternoon. It's going to be hard to get me back to my computer working. You know. this. Don't tell Liana. I know she's on here, but I just want to sit oh. here and do this all day. <laughs> now I'm not doing it. Do you have another color ink? Are you going to do two, two colors? I just was playing with dots. Yeah, I have um, yes. some walnut drawing ink also here. And I also have gold. This is the F&W gold um, that I was going to play with on black paper, but I don't know if it's quite opaque enough. Um, and then I have some walnut ink also. Tell me more about the walnut ink. Yeah, I just ordered this for the office because I have some of this in my studio. The walnut ink is nice. It just has like a real sepia tone. It's obviously like a natural thing as opposed to like a manufactured pigment or chemicals. Um, I think it's semi waterproof, not entirely, but it has, I think it's water resistant. It has like a really particular smell. Um, oh, this actually says light, fast, water soluble. So it's probably slightly water resistant and it's also acid free, this particular one. Um, it's made in the USA. So this is Tom Norton's walnut drawing ink. Um, most places, if they sell walnut ink, sell this brand, but you can also make your own. We don't have an ink making class on our site yet, but we do have natural dyeing classes and you could use walnut for that. Um, excuse me. I'm getting like kind of froggy. I can take over. Don't worry. <laughs> I did recently refer to myself as like, like a forever lieutenant. And I'm so proud you're my general. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, here's the walnut ink. It's uh, it's much more liquidy than the F and W, which has like a little bit of viscosity to it. So on something like the Upo, I think it's too liquidy. But on something more absorbent, um, like I'm sorry, I don't remember your name from earlier, but the the woman who said that the printer paper worked really well for for her. Like if you were having that sort of an issue working with an ink that's more liquidy or a, a watered down watercolor paint or acrylic paint could potentially work instead of using the F and W, which definitely has like a a viscosity to it. Yeah, I'm just tearing down tiny sheets. I like the tininess too. And I'm dipping, well, I shouldn't be doing this probably, but I'm like dipping right into the big bottle of my walnut ink. Um, oh yeah, I said I was gonna like do more shapes as opposed to words, but I wanna do Charlie's name. So I haven't done Charlie. Charlie's my pup. He's laying over here. Where do you put your pen when you're, like where are you resting your pen? Do you have a pen rest? I do actually in my studio, I didn't bring it with me. I'm just resting it on the paper towel. I don't put it in like face down into anything, um, especially with something that has like the sharp nib. I don't want that to get uh, damaged or depressed in any way. There's a walnut ink, by the way. Um, it's much more feathery. That's just Charlie's name a couple times. I think it needs more ink, but do you see how you get more variation here? It's much more like a watercolor. Um, I, but I do pick up vintage straight holders everywhere. Look at this, you guys. I bought this recently. It was like $3, but isn't it so pretty? It's like a blush color. <laughs> when you, ooh, here's that while it was near the camera. The, now I'm asking all my safety questions. When you, how do you travel with your yeah. nib pens? So these are, you know, when I'm using the Nico G, especially like this is real sharp. Um, I wouldn't stick it in a cork or something like you would with an exacto blade because it will mess up the tip. And if it's not aligned, you're going to get, you're not going to have good results for writing or drawing. You actually can buy 
a nib that has a plastic cap on it, like a straight holder that has a plastic cap on it. JetPen sells them. I think it's uh, it's a Japanese brand. I think it's called Takaka, Takakawa or something. Um, and that whole system is more like $13 as opposed to seven with the plastic nib. It's not super pretty though. So I would just travel with them flat in a box as opposed to having them just be loose. Although I've done that too. I um, tried sticking mine in my bun and <laughs> no. it was too tall to fit in my car. Yeah. You know what I've been doing too is like on eBay, I'm constantly looking for um, cases for these because I'd love to have a vintage case for it, but they are, must be really different because like this is a vintage case for a nib pen and there's no way any nib pen would fit in this. It's like really thin. Um, maybe a map making like a, this is called a map making one from Speedball. This would fit in here, but this does not hold an Eco G tip. This holds a much finer smaller diameter tip which I don't prefer and then I do also love um sorry I'm going down a rabbit hole but this is a company in, also in the bay area called osprey and they make these straight holders out of um like a contemporary version of bakelite I forget what it's called but it has a similar name and they're pretty affordable like under 15 dollars the one thing is though that the whole ferrule comes out and that's so that you can easily replace it if needed, but I'm not used to that. Most straight holders, the ferrule is static or um, like cemented in there. So I have to just remember that when I'm taking out the nib to clean it, like this whole thing comes out and it's not broken. It's just meant to do that. But like, look how spectacular those straight holders are. I don't buy jewelry. I buy things like fancy straight holders. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Can I see some of your um, shapes? Or if you, oh, whoa, look, Kate made, it's like a huge ghosty family tree thing. I mean, it's awesome. It's, it looks like a piece of wallpaper. You know, um, the ink, can I just say something? The, in one of the inks that I used was this iron gall ink that I made. And so it starts out like silver, but then it darkens as it oxidizes. So you get to watch its spooky change. <laughs> That's it's amazing. Yeah, um, I, I love it. that. And it looks like, are you working on some kind of found paper that already had texture it's on it? It's a book. Her? It's a book page. That's great. So it's like, yeah. a, oh, yeah. like a, a kid's book. This is so good. I love that second layer of texture. Yeah. Um, Sumita's got hers and she's using her page right in her sketchbook with like a variety of colors with the aqua. I love that. Um, for some of you, like your little frame is not loading for me. So I apologize if other people are sharing and I can't see. I would say if you're using repurposed paper, I just did this lighthouse with the word hello and I'm tickled with how it turns out. Just make sure it's not coated paper because I don't know how well that would work. Yeah, I think it depends. Um, like a lot of vintage paper, you just have to kind of test it and see. You don't know what the printing method is. You don't know what the paper content is. I would just be careful of things that are really fuzzy, like a Japanese handmade Kozo paper, for example. Your nib pen is going to pull those paper fibers out and get stuck in the nib pen. You're, oh, Faith, yours are looking so cool. Mm. That Show me that really dark little bug. That one. <laughs> that is really cool. Okay, truth be told, I did open up a new window and looked up beetles. And now I'm trying to make, and not accurate beetles, but like, this isn't for my imagination. I, I must confess. It. I love it. Yeah, You also, if you kind of have a little stack of these going you could now go back to the ones that are dry and try a new color on top i think working with like two or three colors a limited color palette is really powerful and can look really cool like i like how faith's just like red and black are looking um that can be a fun way to work back into things you've already made I like it when I look up and everyone's looking down. That's my favorite. Then I know you're doing stuff. This could be so lovely too if you did just like a flock of butterflies or bugs and then cut out around them. How would you go about what what adhesive would you use to like say put them on a wall? 
I wouldn't use adhesive. I would use straight pins and fold them in half. So they're like flying. That's why you're the boss. <laughs> because that's a great idea. I think that would be so pretty. I love that idea though, of making like a little flock of bugs or whatever they are, little angels, little people, little gnomes or whatever. Um, yeah, and just like folding them in half on the fold. And so they have dimension and then like pinning them into place would be cool. If you're gonna actually just like glue something to wall, glue stick works really well and it is reversible, but it does take some elbow grease to get it off and some soap and hot water. Um, if you are working with your F and W ink, any acrylic ink, you do want to make sure that you're washing your nib from time to time because that ink will dry on there and um, you can get it off with Windex, but it can clog up your nib. Good point. I'm going to show you this little guy. So um, let me just make sure I'm in the view here. <laughs> Got like this collection of stuff happening everywhere. Um, this is just an accordion piece of that Strathmore paper, which um, Faith and I love accordions so much. We talk about accordions all the time. It's like literally my favorite book structure for sure because it's so versatile. And this is the same concept, right? Where we're doing um, these Rorschach prints. This is not with the nib pen. This is just dropping down some ink and then smushing it together. And then these are image transfers um, of just photo booth photos um, from my collection of photo booth photos. So it's sort of like a combination of this technique and some imagery from my like how to make zines class, which the photo booth guys are in there. And I love that they look sort of like angels or I don't know, these weird like coronas around them and uh, it's just a fun way to combine techniques and mediums, right? So this was all about play. I sort of like limited the imagery, right? So I'm working with these black and white transfers and these weird little rorschach -y prints that look like bugs also. <laughs> um, and I just think it's like, it's such a fun thing to make a little book out of. Or you know, do as a prompt in your sketchbook. Thank you, Faith. Um, and this is just a starting point. You know, I could go on from here. This could be paired with text. You could do this with family members. You know, you could make, you know, take pictures of your family and then make this their little Halloween costumes, you know, working with just like a limited color palette. You can make them into little bugs or butterflies. I don't know. But I thought it was really fun to play with. And it gave me like a way to add a second layer. So sharing that. Easy peasy to do an accordion. I like how a lot of you, Faith included, are working on these book pages as your sort of like beginning layer to the process. I think that looks really cool. It's a way to combine imagery. I have a question. I have a question. Uh -huh. Actually, I just want to know if I have to use it on the sheet, the sheet like this. So which sheet I have to use? like painting, like uh, if I have to do with on big, big. If you're gonna work outside of your sketchbook, what kind of paper, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good question. So um, just like we're working, I would recommend things that are less absorbent. So watercolor paper, even though you're working with watercolor is going to absorb the paint pretty fast. If you're working quickly and you've got a really wet um, wet paint that you're working with, that might not be a problem and you could use watercolor paper. But my favorite paper just overall is using the Strathmore drawing paper. Um, it's the one that has a brown cover. It comes in a pad. So it looks like this. The si it comes in lots of sizes though. This is just a small one, but it is 80 pounds. It has a nice creamy color and it's um, very minimal texture. So I think it works really well for this technique and it also works well for transfers if you're gonna do transfers on that. Yes, Kelly said Bernard Maisner. I'm pretty sure that is the calligrapher I was talking about earlier. I'd have to Google it to be sure. Um, Thank you. Someone said, I think my paper is too thin. I keep poking through. Yes, you might be. You can also um, just be like, try a lighter touch when you're using your nib pen. Um, will this recording be shared and saved on CV? 
this recording will be saved and you will get a link to it after the Zoom is over if you registered for it. Um, that includes people who weren't able to attend today but did register for it. I'm not sure it's going to be on Creative Bug after that though. And the Zoom will expire in a couple months. It may be something we could pop into a blog post, but stay tuned on that. Um, let's see, this says Faith. And, 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 and one more thing, uh, sure. sorry. Uh, from which store do you buy from which store? For the paper, just in general. Are you asking okay. in general? I try to use my local art supply stores. So in the Bay Area, we have um, Flax that I really like to go to um, as like kind of the bigger local brand. But you can also go to things like Blick Online. Um, if you have a craft store in your area, like a Joanne or a Michaels, you could check to see if they have some of the materials that we're using. And then um, there's also like sort of more uh, regional chains, like Jerry's Artorama is one of them. <laughs> and you can get that online as well. I hope that helps. And we did put Thank you so much. links. Thank you so much. Sorry, yes. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, you're so welcome. It's a good question. Um, oh, any suggestions for places to get dinky dips? Yeah, so dinky dips are these little vials. Um, this is in a wooden holder. I just spilled my dinky dip actually. But the dinky dip is the plastic thing that holds the ink. And the reason um, that you wanna use this as opposed to dipping your nib right into the bottle is that the depth of this is exactly the depth of a nib pen. So it prevents ink from getting into the ferrule of your straight holder and causing it to rust or damage. So the dinky dips are really great for that. You can get them on Etsy. Like I got these on Etsy, these weird little silicone like stoppers. I just wanted to try them. I really prefer the wooden block. You can get those on Etsy as well. Um, one of my other local art supplies stores, Arch carries these as well. Um, and then the calligraphy houses for sure will have dinky dips, um, the refills and the little wooden blocks. Isn't that the funniest name ever, the dinky dip? When I learned about that, I was like laughing internally. Oh, I can't believe I already spilled. Oh my gosh, Courtney. Okay, so we are, we have eight minutes to go. Okay. I don't, I don't know, I don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> Other than, I can't believe we're nearing the end. Um, I know it goes fast. I mean, I just watching you guys work. I'm just going to clean this up before I put my arm in. Um, sorry for the noise. Watch you guys work. I just like my mind is already buzzing with all the ideas like, okay, you're working on book pages, which gives you this like extra layer. Um, I love these like much more broad and calligraphic marks you're making to get bigger motifs and imagery. Like these would be really cool as a basis for invites. You could um, cut them up and make like little, like if you think about prayer flags, but you're basically doing like a spooky Halloween calligraphic flags. I keep looking at them and thinking like, oh, that looks like wallpaper. Like I want 50 of those on a wall. Um, I just think they're so fun and versatile, like depending on what it is that you like to do. I haven't tried it on fabric. There might be some component on fabric, not using a nib pen, but using like the, like an eyedropper or something like that. You could definitely try fabric might be great for making quilt blocks. Um, I'm going to ask you with that faith. <laughs> yes, please. Absolutely. Oh, and Pamela oh. said she did exactly what I mentioned. I'm assuming you mean gluing things on the wall. I would have the students write their names with paint, pens, or markers, cut around them, fold it, open them, and then have them hang from monofilament all around the room. That sounds so glamorous. <laughs> really fun. They would try to write special messages and get names, guest names. The high school kids love doing this. Great for icebreaker activities with teachers. That is brilliant, and I love it. Pamela, I hope you also did... Um, blind contour drawings, um, because as Courtney said, uh, these skills or these um, activities that you can do as for all levels, right? As a beginner, as an experienced artist, they all kind of, <laughs> kind of end up similarly. Yeah. Because of the randomness of it all. Yes, it's very impressive. Um, I also like anything that impresses a teenager is like, that's not a phone. I'm, that is worth doing 150%. My alarm is going off. I'm so sorry. 
Somebody asked what nib do I use? I mostly use the Nico G nib, um, but I also will play with like found and vintage nibs too. Just if I happen to see them at like garage sales for a couple bucks a box or what have you. So feel free to experiment. Um, well, I wish everyone a safe and fun Halloween that is coming up. Thanks for joining along on the daily practice. And if you haven't started, it's never too late. Um, the, this technique, not that we were doing today, but that we did in the um, daily practice with the nib pen and the transparencies can be used for any motifs, any time of year. You could use it to make holiday images and make holiday cards. You could use it to trace like portraits of famous people or your family to make portraiture. So you don't have to just stick with spooky images. Um, if you want to share some of the fun little things that you made in the live shoot today, feel free. You can post on Instagram or post it to your gallery in your creative bug profile. And I will definitely be taking a look. Thanks Faith for joining us. Do we have any, um, questions as we sort of wrap up the hour? I really love what everybody made. Thank you for sharing it with me. Very fun. I know some people like the abstract stuff. I can only see some of you in this like chat view. So um, if, just feel free to unmute yourself if you have any last minute questions. <gasps> Faith, these are so good. Do you know what they are though? Specifically, one looks like a cicada with its wings open. Um, these are lantern flies in there. All, all children in the East Coast are trained to kill them on site, which is so dramatic to me. <laughs> they are really beautiful. I know we don't have lantern flies in California, but I did Google them because I was like, they're really pretty. They're beautiful. And Claire knew, <laughs> Claire knew what they were. Um, a lantern fly is an invasive species that's eating a lot of trees. The one weird side effect is there's trees that bees have never been able to eat before, but now they can. And so you're having like never before, like like oak honey or so, but but then you tell people like, oh, this honey was made possible by a spotted lantern fly. And they're like, that sounds disgusting. Um, Kelly's asking about the anti-faith. You mean Joyce the Undead Knitter? I have her makeup palette. I mean, not her makeup palette. She might, she might show up. She doesn't wear makeup, she's undead. Um, yes. We'll be making an appearance possibly on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. She's like not great with technology because she's very old and also undead, but we'll work on it. I'm coaching her. Thanks so much for sharing everyone too. I'm probably just gonna keep making these for another 10 minutes instead of going. Definitely will be. And I, um, for all of you wondering from the very beginning, I figured out what the elevator music was in my house. My dad was on hold for <laughs> far too long. I love that you're live, st live streaming from your parents' dining room, essentially. It's, it, you know, why not? It's very glamorous, I have to say. <laughs> I, I'm using a, um, a, a vase as my, as my camera stand. They have a collection of blue and white vases. Um, <laughs> thank you, Courtney, for letting me join you on this. I had <laughs> such a good time with this technique. And thank you, everybody, for coming along. It's so nice to spend time uh, crafting together, making together. Oh, my gosh. Meryl, that looks like a, like a lobster. Yeah. Oh, I love the, that magenta color. I haven't used that yet today. Um, do we have our next live scheduled? Oh, mm -hmm. Phil, that's fabulous. Those blue splotches. <gasps> the turquoise and the navy look so good together. Oh, very cool. We do have our next live scheduled, I think, but I cannot think of it top of mind at the moment. Oh, no, I do. It's Mo in November coming up right because we're almost November and Mo was on here earlier I don't know if she is still on the live now but we are going to be doing um, a live with Mo Saha who is one of our instructors um, she did a gratitude daily practice which we are going to be re-promoting in November because who doesn't need a little bit more gratitude I know I do in my life um, and so she'll be joining us um, with Stephanie who's Twinkie Chan and they'll be doing a new gratitude prompt with art journaling. And um, I believe we'll have the link to that coming up soon. If, unless Ivy, we have it ready now and you can put it in the chat, but you can register for that live event um, and join along and listen to Mo uh, talk about her gratitude practice. And um, she's also going to show you her first gratitude journal, which is also an accordion, which is really beautiful. I got a chance to see it. So she'll be sharing that amongst other things. So do check out the next live. 
That's in November. November 9th. Calendar in front of me. I think it's like November 9th or something. The 9th. Thank you. Um, thank you everyone for being here. So good to see your faces. And um, those that are familiar and those are maybe the first time for me to see. I also love seeing like your craft rooms and living rooms and places that you're coming live from. I'm like, what's that book on that shelf? Ooh, what's that picture back there with all those little drawers? It's very, it's very exciting. Um, anyway, thank you. Thank you everyone. And have a great and safe Halloween. Join us for our next live in November with Mo Saha. Thank you, Faith. Thanks Ivy for um, doing our technical dance here. Um, yeah. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.